Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new to Zergo 10 or have seen my recent videos, you're aware that there were some pretty big changes that all started with the re-architecture into Linux and containers. That said, there was also a major change for authentication into Zergo, and that's all handled now through a solution called Keycloak. While you can manage users, groups, and role-based access controls through Keycloak locally, you're now also able to integrate Keycloak to other access management solutions, and for this demo, we're going to focus on Active Directory Federation using an LDAP as provider in Keycloak. Before you get started though, be sure you have already deployed the ZVM appliance to your vCenter, enabled SSH, provided a static IP address, and also a DNS server. If you haven't done that yet, then go ahead and pause the video and I'll be here when you return. If you have, then let's go. Let's take a look first at Active Directory. Um, I have this set up so I have an OU for my groups where I have a zero admins and a zero read-only group. I've already went ahead and assigned users to them. Uh, one for myself as an admin, and then a Zerto reader account for the read-only account. Now there is one more account that you could use, and that's to connect to LDAP. I'm just going to use the domain admin account since it's already there, it already has access, um, and it's in the default users OU. So because my environment is a private lab, I don't have a trusted SSL cert. So I'm gonna to have to export the computer certificate from this server, which also happens to be the domain controller, as well as the CA certificate from the domain controller. Now you can follow along here step-by-step step, or check the description in this video for a link to the actual documentation from the Zerto help site. All right, so we're just gonna save this to the desktop of this server, and then we'll go and export the CA cert. So when you run this command, it's gonna export that certificate to whatever directory your command prompt is at. So in this case, it's the C drive under the user's administrator folder. So we'll just browse to that folder now and copy the search to the desktop. And once we have our certificate files, we're going to now upload them to the ZVMA and then perform a couple of steps to import those certificates into Keycloak. Now for this, you can use any kind of file transfer utility. I'm using WinSCP uh, to transfer those certificates. And then once I get those uploaded, I'm going to go into PuTTY, use SSH to then import them into the Keycloak Trust Store.
Now the first certificate we're going to import is the server certificate. Um, this is a pretty long command, so you'll want to click on that link in the description to be able to go to the documentation that will tell you exactly how to do it. And then we're going to type in the key store pass for Keycloak, which is trust store pass, all one word, lowercase, also in the documentation. We're going to accept the certificate, and then now we're going to run the command to import the CA certificate. Now one thing to note here is that if the appliance asks you to change the trust store password, do not change it. Use the exact same password. So now that our certificates are imported, the last step here is to restart the Keycloak container. Once you've done that, you can exit the shell, and now we're going to go and do the rest of the work in the Keycloak user interface. All right, so if this is the first time you're logging into Keycloak, the username is going to be admin, and the default password is admin. Uh, as soon as you answer that, you're going to have to change the password, so just set it to something that's more acceptable to your policies, and then hit Submit to continue. All right, so once you're in Keycloak, the first thing you want to do is switch from the master realm to the Zerto realm. After you've done that, it should say Welcome to Zerto on the main screen. We're going to go down to User Federation on the left side, and then select Add LDAP Providers, and then we'll start with our configuration here. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is type in the connection and authentication settings. If you can't see what I'm typing, check the bottom of the video on the right, the format to use is there, and you wanna make sure that fully qualified domain name matches the subject alternative name in the certificate, otherwise you could get errors when you first try to connect. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna configure the account that we're gonna to use to bind to LDAP and make that connection. In my case, I'm using the administrator account as I mentioned earlier, so we're gonna to go to the properties for the administrator account, hit that attribute editor tab and copy out the distinguished name. And we're going to paste it into the bind DN field in Keycloak. Now we're just going to enter the account password and then hit test authentication to see if we have a successful connection. All right, there we go. So we're successfully connected to LDAP. Um, now scroll down and we're going to go and edit some of the LDAP search and updating fields. The first thing we're going to do is change the edit mode to read only um, because we don't want Keycloak to be making any changes to Active Directory. We just wanted to use it as a source. The next field we're going to update is the users DN. Now this is telling Keycloak which OU to go and look for users in. So to get that, we're going to right click on the OU itself and go to the properties, again going to an attribute editor and copying the DN for this OU. We'll take that and paste it into the field. And then the next one we're going to update is a username LDAP attribute. And for this one, we're going to want to use the SAM account name as it appears on your screen. Once you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to set a search scope. So the search scope will tell Keycloak just how deep into your OU structure you want it to search for users. Um, since mine only has a single OU with user accounts in it, then I'm going with one level. Next, I'm going to disable the synchronization settings for importing users. And this is going to be especially important in large environments where you have a lot of users within an OU. You don't want Keycloak to end up pulling all those user accounts into Keycloak itself.
All right, and when we're done here, we'll just click Save to save our settings. And then we'll go back into the LDAP provider. And now we're going to create our mappers. Okay, so for the first mapper, we're going to create a login method mapper uh, with a mapper type of hard-coded attribute mapper. The user model attribute name is going to be login method as you see on your screen. And then the attribute value for that is going to be user federation as you see on your screen. I'll click save and then on the left side, go to clients. And then from there, go to Zerto client toward the bottom there. From here, click the Client Scopes tab. And finally, select Zerto Client Dedicated. And once you're in there, click on the Add Mapper button and then choose By Configuration. And we're going to select User Attribute. Now from here, the mapper type should already be selected for you and you can't change it. Uh, but the name should be login method mapper as seen on the screen. The user attribute is login method. Token claim name is login method. And the claim JSON type is string. And you're also going to want to enable add to ID token add to access token, as well as add to user info, and then click save. And we're almost there. One more mapper to set up, and this is going to create a mapper for groups. Um, in this case, we're gonna to map to an OU in AD called groups. Um, we're going to want to pull these two groups into Keycloak. So as opposed to bringing users in, we want to bring the groups in because then we'll be able to take the groups and assign Zerto role-based access controls to those groups. So to do that, we're going to go back into the LDAP provider. We're going to go back to the Mappers tab and we're going to add a new mapper. Okay, so for this next section here where we create the mapper for groups, um, follow what's on the screen right now because um, I want to dig into a few of these things here. So uh, the first one, the LDAP groups DN. Uh, so what I want to focus on is the distinguished name for the groups OU. It's as simple as going and getting the distinguished name for the groups OU. However, if you have one group OU and you have hundreds of groups in there that don't relate to Zerto, you might want to think about creating a, a new OU just for, or sub OU, child OU, for Zerto groups. Um, that way you can put the groups DN in for that folder or OU instead of pulling everything into Zerto. Um, that goes hand in hand with that LDAP filter that you see that is optional. Um, if you go that route and you have a separate OU for your Zerto groups, then you can leave that LDAP filter optional blank. Um, otherwise, if you don't want to do that and you have an OU with a bunch of groups in them, then you can use the format to the right of that where it says CN equals group A, CN e equals group B, and list specific groups that you want to bring into uh, Keycloak. Totally optional. Um, and then the last portion is just to make sure you select uh, for the groups retrieve strategy, load groups by member attribute recursively. And after we've got these all set, we'll just click Save. And there's our group mapper. So next thing we're gonna do is before we uh, head out of here, we're gonna add the group, we're gonna sync the groups uh, to Keycloak, and then we're gonna go and add the roles to those groups. So click on the group mapper you just created. And then at the top right where it says Action, click on that and sync LDAP groups to Keycloak.
So now we'll go to Groups, and we can see our two Zerto admin and read-only groups in there. Uh, we're going to click on Zerto admins, click on Role Mapping, and we're going to add the roles for Zerto specific to this group. So first, filter by clients, and then you can change the view to show more per page. Um, because the setting you want is going to be toward the bottom. It's called Zerto role underscore admin. Uh, check the box for that and hit assign. So now anyone added to Zerto admins will be a Zerto admin according to the role in Keycloak. Then go into Zerto read only, role mapping, same thing. Um, but this time you're going to choose the Zerto role viewer role. Okay, now we've got everything configured in Keycloak. We're going to go to the Zerto management page and we're going to enable role based access controls. Uh, when we do this, it's basically going to deny everybody access unless they have an AD account that maps to an AD group that we've given a role in Zerto or Keycloak to get access. So we'll log in here with the admin account, go to security and RBAC, select no access, and there's no save button, so you can go ahead and leave this page at this point. But right now what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to go to Zerto now and we're going to try logging in with my AD account to, uh, to Zerto. Uh, so no domain is required because it's already going to be pulling that in from the, the LDAP configuration. So I'll just put my name and password. Um, I'm going to go to Setup and we'll see if it lets me deploy a VRA. So, so far everything's looking good. I can choose all the settings here. In fact, I was able to click the new VRA button in the first place. So that tells me that I've got some kind of access. So set our IP settings here and install. So now that's off and running. We'll check in vCenter to see if everything is getting deployed. And the task listing down there, you can see that everything's going as expected for someone who's got full access. Now I'm going to log out, and this time I'm going to log in with that Zerto read-only account. And we'll try to deploy a VRA with that account. So if we go back into setup here, I can check the box, but new VRA link doesn't light up. So it's already telling me that I can't do it. Um, even if I go to the hamburger menu and I try to go to site settings, I can't see that. Uh, so I'll log out, log back in with my account, and we'll get the second VRA deployed. All right, so we'll just let that VRA complete its installation, but to summarize what we did here, the process to integrate Zerto with Active Directory via Keycloak is pretty straightforward. Uh, majority of where you can expect to spend the most of your time when doing this is gonna be in the configuration of the Keycloak LDAP provider, mappers, and role mapping. Um, in my opinion though, after doing this several times, trying to find the best flow of steps, once you get that down, it's easy to repeat the process because after all, you'll still have to do this for each ZVMA in your environment. But if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, if you found this to be helpful, please like the video and subscribe for future updates. Um, and please share this with others who might find this helpful as well. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.